So with activity two, uh, also called the basic shapes, we're going to um, back up just a little bit and just sort of trace the outlines. So to get to here, we go to BBT9 and Vector Graphics and Inkscape Activity 2. And once you've loaded the page, it will look something like this. You'll notice that there's a number of instructions and some pretty pictures as you go through. And a reminder to save your work and publish it. There's also a file to download. So we're just going to download that file really quickly. Oops, that didn't work. Try it this way. We'll do save. <clears throat> I'll just put it on my desktop for now. And then when I open Inkscape, I can open up that file. It was on my desktop. And it was called Basic Shapes Starter. And I say open. Okay, and there's our file. Um, if you want to see what's going on behind the scenes, there's a layers button. So here's layers here, or you can go to layers, layer and then layers, and you can see over here, oops, uh -huh. there we go. Um, so you can see over here that this is where we're going to do our tracing. Do not trace here is a big sign there. And what I've done just to make it a little bit easier um, is I've added a couple of different layers. You can see there's the trace layer and it's locked so you can't uh, touch it and I don't want you to. Here's the do not trace layer and it's locked. And again, I don't want you to touch that. And here's the red circle just in case that kind of throws you off. I wanted you to know don't do your tracing over here, do your tracing over there. But sometimes when you want to look at this, um, and what we want to do is just see here with the heart, see how it says four anchor points. Well, we'll call them nodes. In Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator, they call them anchor points, but I think we're all pretty familiar with, with what they are. And so, um, so now when you see those four points, there's an easy way and a hard way to do this, and I'm going to choose the easy way for right now. So when I choose the Bezier Curve tool, which is our supreme button for this unit, I'm just going to click on those four points that were given to me in the diagram. This is obviously not the finished product. Um, actually, I might put it right up there on the outside edge, and then I'll move the other one later. So you can see it sort of disappeared. That's because um, that's because the line was black, and what I was drawing was black. So really, I want to set my stroke. Well, I'll choose red. You can. Um, choose another color maybe we could choose yellow as well and we'll also make that thick so this is the button here for editing the object or you can go to object fill in stroke you can see the same pictures and so in my stroke style I can increase the width a whole bunch so usually I want to set it in this activity we'll set it to about six um, in other activities we set it to a different number and then with our edit the nodes button. I'm just going to pull this one back up here so it's at the outside edge. So you can kind of see what I've what I want to do here. All right. Now, I'm going to cheat. Just you can do it one at a time. You can just click here and then click the bull with the horns or the one beside it sometimes works as well. I'm actually going to drag over both of these two cuz I want to do them both at the same time and do the bull with horns. <clears throat> also known as the symmetrical tool. And now I can just kind of stretch this one up. But you see how like one side is shouldn't be the same as the other. Okay. So in this case, maybe it's not the symmetrical tool that we want. Maybe we want the smooth tool. We haven't used the smooth tool yet, so I just want to talk about it. So there's the cusper corner tool. But if we if I bring this one up now, you can see here, yes, the angle are, is still straight through the node. But now when I drag, it's only the bottom that reacts. It's not both sides. So that's the big difference between these two buttons right here, the smooth tool and the symmetrical tool, or the rounded tool and the bull with horns tool, whichever one you would like to call it, okay, is that, um, the, yes, the nodes still, oh, that one's still selected. So the nodes still um, go exactly where we want them to, but now each side is independent. So you can see here, there's some white in the gap here, so that would be wrong. You can see here, there's some black in this gap here. That would be wrong. You want to put your color so it covers up both sides. And we'll just cover that one up. Now this one here, 
where did my handles go? Now, in some classes, and some people I've told them, well, you go to the bull with the horns tool and you get them back and then you draw them again. But what I've actually discovered since that time is that if you hold down shift on your keyboard, holding down shift and click and drag, it pulls a handle out. Okay. And so now I can just lower this one down and then I'm going to repeat it on the other side. So I go back to here. I'm not clicking right now. I hold down shift and I begin my click and drag now and I just pull it out. Okay. And then over here, there's, oh, oh, okay. And that one is smooth now. That's good. Not symmetrical, just smooth. And so I can pull these out. All right. And then now for the purpose of the pretty picture that I put onto my web page, I actually highlighted all of my points so that you can see which way they go. And uh, I'm just going to do this one. See how it doesn't have any handles right now? I'm just going to do a shift click, pull one out that way and do a shift click and pull one out that way and there. So now you can see if I highlight those again. So this one is sort of a V shape. This one's sort of a V shape. This one's straight up and down. This one's straight up and down. Okay. But this is a, the strategy that we often use um, when you're doing a trace is that you'll go back to the Bezier curve tool and you'll kind of just click on the points and don't worry about really all the, the curves yet. Just click on the points. So for this one, um, I'm going to do six clicks. And again, it's sort of disappeared. So let's make this pale blue. And I'll increase the width to six. I'm just going to type that in, press enter. Now, how did I know to make it that shape? Well, for right now in the basic shapes, I asked you to use only six anchor points for the bone. So there's the six anchor points. And then we can edit those points. And for right now, I'm just going to take all of those points um, and make them corners. Okay. Now, if I click on this, there's no handles. So I just hold down shift and pull a handle out going this way a little bit. And then I hold, I keep holding down shift and pull this handle out a little bit. And so I'm just, just keeping my finger on the shift and just going around and pulling each one out. Okay. So you go ahead and try that out. Um, you can see this is, it takes a little bit of, oops, wrong way. I'll put you back down. And actually, if I don't want that guy anymore, I can just hold down control and click on him and he goes away. And let's try this again. Shift, pull this one out there. I got the right one that time. Okay. So there's how to do the bone. All right, and there's all the different points and pieces. Now for the shamrock, oh, sorry, that's not the shamrock. For the leaf, okay, in the example given, there's 11 anchor points. Notice there's two really close together and four really close together down below. So go ahead, try those out using the same techniques. If you want, you can try to do the click and drag. I find it problematic when you get to corners like this. So for instance, if I do a click and drag here, and then come on up and do a click and then come on over and do a click. What you're going to see here is see this red line now that's following my mouse around. I can't really easily turn that into a corner. Um, now Adobe Illustrator has a really easy way. They have this control click thing. I have not yet found a way in Inkscape to do that. So we end up with kind of this weird little curve right there. And then this one's going to have another weird little curve. Okay, and then I'm just going to hit enter for right now, and I just want to show that to you. Let's make this stroke red and increase it to six. All right, so you can kind of see that's a little wonky. So again, I go back to this one here. If I click right now, it's considered smooth. So I make it a corner. And then I can pull this one up and do the same thing with this one, make it a corner and pull it up. Now, some of my students have also asked me, Mr. Rich, I kind of did the top half, but I haven't finished the bottom half yet. What do I do now? How do I continue drawing? And the answer is easier than I thought. Uh, I'm just going to zoom in here. That was a control zoom, by the way. Um, and that is, I'm going to go back to the Bezier curve. The nodes are still there. So I just click click and drag. And then I'm just going to do a click, click, click. 
and then click to finish. All right, it now knew that those were my nodes. So now when I come back to here, oh, this guy needs a shift click to pull him out. There we go. It's a little bit better. Now you can see how it's fighting like that. That's because this one over here is too long. So I just pull that back in. So anytime you have a, a, a path like this between two nodes, you kind of realize that the, the handles um, play either against each other or for each other like that. So again, I can do it like that, but really that's more like what I want. And I'll pull this one out. Whoa, that's a little crazy. Now, <clears throat> what was happening there? Let me just control click on that again. What was happening there was I missed the node and now I was just dragging the line. I don't know if you've ever noticed before, but you can actually just drag the line and then the handle goes with it. So I'm just going to pull that back. And so again, the computer is trying to do the math for us. Whether it's succeeding or not, you can make up your own mind afterwards. I'm quite not happy with that. So I'm just gonna pull this one down, pull this one over. You can see how the interplay between them is kind of frustrating sometimes. So now with these guys here, I'm just gonna make them all smooth in the click of a button. So there, they're all smooth. And then this one here, I just wanna bring it back again. Okay, so that was the nice thing about here was I just, if I maybe just choose that one and then hold down shift and get another one in on that grouping. So I can make them all um, smooth just by clicking on the smooth button. There are some other hotkeys that you can choose uh, in order to make that perfect. So there you go, that's, that's the leaf. And not only that, but we've managed to, um, we've managed to kind of do half of the leaf and then do the other half of the leaf and keep going. So go ahead, finish off the basic shapes. There's two more there to do, and they're very interesting. And no, you do not have to do a trace around the letters, basic shapes, or the words. Okay, so that's activity two, basic shapes.